everyone, Miss Stephanie here. Welcome back to Friday Chapter One. This week I have picked a juvenile book. It follows 12 year old twin brothers Mal and Calm, or when they're in trouble, Malcolm to their mother. They've had some tragedy in their lives. Their father was killed in a car accident when they were just 10. And now mom's decided they need a fresh start. So she got a new job and is moving them from Dallas all the way up to Chicago. The title is called The Phantom Tower. It's by Keir Graff. And there's a lot of magic and mystery in this book. So if that's something you like, you can place it on hold and pick it up either inside the library or through the drive up. Let's get started. Brunhild Tower. Virgilio the doorman seemed like a pretty nice guy. He was short and wide with jet black hair, round eyes, a flat nose, and the widest smile I had ever seen. Welcome to Brunhild Tower, he said, grinning and shaking my hand as I came into the little entry room behind Mom. Then when Mal appeared behind me, he exclaimed, Wow, there are two of you. People always say a lot of dumb stuff when they meet identical twins, like, I must be seeing double, or when they made you, I guess they didn't break the mold. Fortunately, Virgil Leo moved on before Mal and I had to decide which one of us would pretend to laugh at the joke. So, how old are you guys? He asked as he shook Mal's hand too. Twelve, I told him. So that's what grade? We're going into seventh. And uh, how do people tell you apart? Asked Virgil Leo. Mom smiled. They can't. That's the problem. Not even you? It depends, said Mom. If I've been with them for a while, I can always tell. But if one of them walks into a room and I forgot what they've been wearing, sometimes it even takes me a minute. <laughs> and if we swapped clothes, I thought, like we sometimes used to do before Dad died, she had no clue at all. Mal looked at me and smiled like he was remembering the same thing. Okay, final question, said Virgilio. Can you read each other's minds? No, said Mal, at the exact same moment. I said, yes. Huh, you guys need to get your story straight, chuckled Virgilio. The building manager was gone for the day, and Mom had to sign something before Virgilio could give us the keys to our new apartment. Once that was done, he told us which elevator to use and then opened the inner lobby door that led us into the building itself. It was nice having someone open the door for us, but it was also kind of strange how we had to wait for him to do it. It made me feel special, but also a little bit rude. When I whispered that to mom, she agreed, but it's also his job, she said, so we should let him do it and respect the way he earns his living. My first thought was like, it looked like a hotel out of some old movie, a really old fashioned hotel. I mean, where else do you see furniture in a hallway? My second thought was, there's more than one elevator? Virgilio said to turn left and then it would be on the right, said mom. We turned left and looked right, down a long hall with evening light coming in through the high windows on our left. We walked to the end of the hall and found an elevator. A small metal plate next to the elevator said one, two. That's not right, said mom, shaking her head. Our apartment number is 1404. We're in the wrong tier. Tier? What's that? asked Mal. There are three elevators in this building and each elevator serves two apartments on each floor. Each stack of apartments is a tier. We must have walked past ours. We retraced our steps and found another elevator where we'd first turned right. The place was so elegant that even the elevators blended into the scenery. The metal plate beside the door is red, three, four. That's it, said mom. We walked right past it. I pushed the buttons and looked up to see a semicircle of brass numbers just above the door. After a moment, an arrow started moving counterclockwise through the numbers as the elevator started to come down. I know what you're thinking, I told Mal. You do not, he said. I did know what he was thinking at that moment, though. Even if he wasn't transmitting his thoughts, he was missing our old place, where he knew where everything was and how it all worked. But I knew he was also starting to feel a little bit curious about our new home, just like I was. The elevator, door, elevator doors opened, and it sounded like there was an old-fashioned bell trying to ring, but something was stuffed inside. Instead of ding, it went tink. How many floors are in this building, Mom? I asked as the door closed behind us. Check out the buttons, stupid, said Mal, nodding at the panel. I punched him in the arm and then looked. The highest button was labeled 17. 17 floors, I said. What's our apartment number again? 1404, said Mom. Oh, we are gonna have a rock star view, said Mal. I looked at the buttons again, pushed 14, then I noticed something weird. There was no 13, I told Mal and Mom. People used to be superstitious about the number 13, said Mom. They thought it was unlucky. That's called triskaidekaphobia, said Mal, with a smug smile on his face. 
I thought about punching him for just knowing that, but decided to save it for something more annoying because it was kind of an interesting word. They would leave out the number 13 whenever they could, continued Mom. Most old buildings don't have a 13th floor. Well, they do, I started to say. But they're numbered 14, said Mal. I glared at him. When Mal finished my sentences, it wasn't because he was reading my mind. It was because he couldn't help interrupting me. So when you think about it, we're on the 13th floor, Mal explained, just to make sure we all knew he had figured it out. I guess you're right, Mal, said Mom. It's a good thing we're not superstitious. Speak for yourself, I thought. I'm not afraid of unlucky numbers, but I still think there are a lot of things we don't know, if you know what I mean. The elevator stopped and the door opened with the same tink. We stepped out into a short hall with doors on the right and left. There was a lamp on a table and four framed pictures on the wall showed what looked like Chicago in the olden days. I don't know if this is a room or a hallway, I said. It's called an elevator lobby, said Mom. It's like a waiting area for these two apartments. Right then, Eric meowed really loud. Better hurry. I think he has to use the litter box, said Mal. Mom unlocked the top lock, then the bottom lock, and pushed the heavy front door open. She turned on the lights, and we squeezed past her and ran into the apartment. I put down the cat carrier and took a look around. Well, there was no mystery yet in there, except... No 13th floor. I've heard of that before. Well, if you like what you heard, click the link, put it on hold, and I'll see you next time. Bye!